What's going on everybody? It is your man Cleveland Terry and to be honest with you, I had no intention of making a video today. I was actually going through my videos trying to figure out what gig log I would edit. And then I got this really cryptic email. The email basically stated, optical DJ is better than face, or at least it will be if the market allows it. Let's talk about it. All right, y'all, once again, if you're new here, please understand that this is what we discuss. DJ related content, DJ gear, DJ industry, DJ gig logs, a little bit of everything goes down in these things. However, if you wanna get a little more personal, a little more one-on-one, -on -one, I would suggest that you head to my Wake Up in Cleveland show every morning, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We talk about gear, we talk about life, we talk about anything and everything, especially if I'm doing any testing on products. Before I release that product review, you're probably going to see it on the Wake Up in Cleveland show. That is on Twitch, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right, guys, let's get into it. Now, this is not paid for, this is not sponsored, there's no money involved in any of this. This is basically just a guy trying to get his product to market. So I took a look, and to be honest, I'm a little intrigued. My name's Nick Bellman. Uh, I'm the inventor of the optical DJ cartridge. Uh, the needle never skips because there's no needle at all. It just uses an infrared laser. You just put your tone arm in the up position and then it clicks on as a cartridge. But you can read two dimensions of movement, X and Y, because the normal DJing is just backwards and forwards, whereas what I'm doing is backwards, forwards and sideways. <laughs> So I like what's going on right here. I do have a couple of concerns right off the bat and that is the sideways tone arm action of being, being able to adjust the pitch. Super, super cool. Also being able to use that as maybe uh, an additional MIDI option, MIDI effects, all of those things, super cool. However, because the tone arm was never designed to be exceptionally stable, I would be concerned that it would be easy to bump it kind of out of the way and completely screw up your pitch. You know, if you're DJing and all of a sudden you're, you're doing some, some tricks and then you accidentally hit it, or maybe the vibration, the movement of the DJing, of the juggle, of the scratching, just slightly moves the uh, tone arm, it's gonna affect everything. So I'm a little concerned with that, but obviously something that potentially could be fixed and whatever manufacturer decides to implement this. But as a standard tone arm, I'm more concerned with how you really lock that tone arm in place to keep it from moving. There's a, there's a bit of lat latency because this is just a prototype, but it will work on USB 2. You can use the, the phono cable from the turntable. You can plug that into USB to get three volts down the tone arm into the product so you, essentially it's wireless it's a wireless dj product a bit like phase but with phase you have to charge it up and uh, with phase you only get one dimension of scratching which is just backwards and forwards now look there is a reason that the phases are battery powered it's so it can be out of the way so you can do all the things you normally do without concern that you're going to hit something or bang something and it's going to it's going to screw up your entire mix or your entire session there's a reason for that. So I'm a little concerned with like the size, the cartridge itself right now, even though it's in prototype, it's a rather large cartridge. You're taking up a lot of space on that record with the actual cartridge. Now, of course, when we're talking about making changes and prototypes, things can shrink. Once you get into the manufacturing process, who knows, maybe we can get it down to like the size of a, a short needle cartridge. It's, it's a possibility. To make it work with any software, it just spits out a number. So it should work with Serato, Rekordbox, Tractor, Virtual DJ. It'll work with any software, it just spits out a number and that's the playback speed. It's up to them how they support it. Um, all you do is put your tone arm in the up position. So it should work with all turntables with a tone arm up lever, which is nearly all turntables really. 
Now, obviously this is just a prototype. The guy's out there, he's trying to sell this product, trying to get it in to the hands of some sort of manufacturer that's willing to do something with this. Keep in mind that it's sort of like phase, but not like phase. As he mentioned that phase is on batteries. You have to charge the batteries in order to get this thing to work. However, this, because it's connected to the tone arm and it's being powered by a three volt USB, it's USB 2, you never have to worry about whether or not your phases are charged. So this is definitely an alternative option to phase. Now again, phase is already in market. They've already proved their concept works. This, while it looks like from just a quick visual thing that yes, it's definitely something that could work. We have no idea how reliable it can be until once you start to get it out there and get into, into some real world use case scenarios. We need to test this out in different environments, different lighting environments, whether you be outside, whether you're at a club that's shooting hazers and smoke and all of these things, like is that going to get in the way of the laser's ability to read the record? Is it gonna require a special record? Because if a record is completely smooth and lacks any type of feeling, is the laser going to read movement? If you're a company like Pioneer that doesn't have a RAIN 12 competitor, building this charging area into the tone arm could go a long way. And because of this option, you don't lose the ability of being able to play your records like you do if you were using the RAIN 12s. This is something that I'm gonna keep watching because I think that there's something here. I don't necessarily believe that you can come to market with this as a standalone product. I think you do have to get it in the hands of an actual manufacturer and have them build this into the system. It's going to be a lot harder to attach some sort of a USB device and have cords running outside of the tone arm. Now they're potentially getting in the way. You gotta strap them in if you're moving from venue to venue. Now you have to put that on and then what are you gonna zip tie it on, Velcro it on? Like there's, there's so many little things that come into play. Not to mention that a lot of people have broken tone arms and some of these tone arms don't stay in the upright position as this is required to do. While my PLXs have fine tone arms, I have three older Techniques 1200s with broken tone arms. So I pick them up, I put it on the record. That's it, that's it. I can't lift it up. If I lift it up, I gotta put it back on the broken tone arm holder. That's it. So there's also that caveat with this that you really have to make sure that the people that are buying it understand that it has to be elevated, it has to be up. So there's a lot of different things that I could see happening with this. This is literally just a prototype. It's alpha, it's not even beta, it's not in market, there's no test scenarios, there's nothing there. But the concept is pretty impressive. All right guys, if you found what I said are useful, hit that like button. If you found what I said are really useful, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow me on the Instagrams and the Twitters. Always a pleasure. If I don't talk to you later, we'll talk soon. Peace.